Now these can get quite large. Um, we're gonna take a minute and walk out onto the sales floor and I'm gonna give you an example of one of the pitcher plants that got, gets just a little bit larger. Some of you asked a little bit more information about our carnivorous plant, so that's what we're gonna go over today. My name is Kim, I'm one of the plant dudes here at the tie-dyed iguana. So this, today we are gonna be talking about carnivorous. And one of the carnivorous that's a little better known to everybody and one that people ask about most frequently is the Venus flytrap, which I have in front of me. One thing to consider as you walk into the shop and look at our carnivorous is most of them are under a humididome. And we do that to keep the humidity up, that's obvious. So keep that in mind if you buy one and bring one home that they like a humid atmosphere, whether you have several of them and put them under a humididome or a small cup lid, or just keep them in an area that's a little bit more humid, that's pretty important. Carnivorous just by nature means they are meat eaters. An important thing to remember there is that they do not need any kind of fertilizer. A fertilizer uh, that you might give with your other plants, if you give that to a carnivorous plant, it's likely to kill them. So no fertilizer and use the RO water, no tap water. The reverse osmosis water, distilled water, is best uh, to keep your plants very healthy. You don't want to use tap water. Tap water has other minerals in there, particularly calcium, that might be harmful to your carnivorous plants. So stay with RO, stay with distilled water. You can see as you look at our Venus fly traps that they are just that. They have a little trap on them with the little spikes and these will attract and catch some of the smaller bugs and insects that you might have in your house. Now it's not going to catch a butterfly, it's not going to catch a moth or a stink bug, anything big like that, mostly bugs that are very small. And once they hit near the trap, the trap will close, and then the secretions that are inside the trap, the natural items that are part of the Venus fly trap, will very slowly disintegrate and digest that particular insect. Once the insect is digested, and I'll point out here, you will notice that the end of the Venus fly trap that did the capturing will get dark and die off. That's fine, that's natural. When that happens, all you need to do is take one of your little clippers and just go ahead and clip it off. It's very careful when you're handling the Venus fly traps to try not to touch them because you could inadvertently set off the trap. You could trick it, it could think that it's grabbing onto something, it'll close and once they close, they start that digestive process and then the little leaf will die off. So be careful not to do that. Now, when you come into the shop, if you're interested in any of our carnivorous plants, we keep them in these special trays that are a little bit lower because for watering purposes, again, we don't want to touch uh, the traps. We just put water into the tray and they like to, um, as we affectionately call it, butt chug. So getting one out is a little bit difficult. We usually grab from the bottom, then use one of our tongs or fingers to pull it out. So just be careful. If you're looking for one of these, just go ahead and ask a member of our sales team and they'll go ahead and get it, and get it out for you. Like all of our plants, we do have care sheets. So if you're not so sure how to care for the Venus flytrap, just go ahead and grab one of those care sheets. Butt chugging is the way to do it, whether you have it in a tray like this or whether you put it in a pot, just go ahead and feed it from the bottom. Don't put any water on the top of it because again, you are liable inadvertently to go ahead and trigger that trap. Venus fly traps, a very popular item. One of the carnivores that we are not so familiar with would be a sundew. And we have sundew here that are in two different species. And again, all carnivorous work in a similar way where there is an attractant. If you look very close on the leaves, on the stems of the sundew, you will see, and as the, you can see with the sunlight, there's tiny little hairs which have tiny little pieces of moisture on it. Those are the sticky secretions that will go ahead and attract and trap whatever insect should come through. A smaller version, a little different in terms of its size and its texture, but the smaller of the sundew works in exactly the same way. Uh, after a while, as you get a very healthy sundew, it will put out a longer stem uh, with a flower on it. Flower serves no purpose other than it'll suck some of the nutrients actually away from the plant. So go ahead and as you see that larger stem go, if you're not so sure what it is, just leave it alone. When you see the bloom start to happen, just go ahead and clip that off. It's not gonna hurt anything, but it does actually steal a little bit of nutrient from the sundew. So the sundew are very, very attractive, whichever species you like, unlike the flower 
supply trap, these can be watered from the top. We do keep them in the same tray. We do keep them with a the humididome, but they will do the butt chugging. So you can water a little bit lightly from the top and then go ahead and let them get their moisture from the bottom. Next, I'm going to show you a carnivorous plant that we don't keep here very often. This is a Mexican butterwort, and it works along the same system as does the sundew. It doesn't have those long hairs, but its leaves, which are quite textured and actually very attractive, um, do have the stickiness on it. So little gnats, especially really small gnats, small fruit flies, will go ahead and get attracted, and after a while, you'll see little black spots on there, and those are actually the insect. They have a very shallow root base, so they they don't dig in very, very deep in, in, into the soil. They'll go down probably maybe a half inch at most. Now you can see on this particular one, and this is the way we water these, is we use a wicking system. Once we put this in to its cup, we have a second cup that we fill with water, and this is actually a little low. We'll put some water in this today. We actually use a nylon rope as a wick. Make sure that the water does not come up to the bottom of that uh, top cup and it will just go ahead and water itself through the wicking system. It's just a better way to do this, no direct watering from the top. It is a butt chugger, but it likes to do that through the wicking system. Uh, we don't get Mexican butterworts very often. If you see one of these and you're a little bit confused about how to set up the wicking system, uh, of course, this one is already set up. You can just check with our sales team. But this is a, um, a very unusual kind of carnivorous, and it's quite attractive. Finally, let me show you our pitcher plants, and they are Nepenthes and Saracena, but we call them our pitcher plants because they do have a natural pitcher that will pop up here. Some are a little bit different than others. The Nepenthes actually have the larger pitcher, and the Saracena have one that's a little smaller, almost looks like a jack-in-the-pulpit that you might see uh, in the woodland area. And you can just guess how these would work because that pitcher is there. Insects are attracted to the moisture that's in there. They'll get to the pitcher, they'll step inside, they'll slip into the bottom where the digestive juices are waiting for them, and wham, off they go. Similarly to the Venus flytrap, is sometimes they will start to die off once the pitcher closes and once they have an insect in there. If any of your pitchers get a little bit nasty, you can go ahead and clip them off. That's not unusual for that to happen um, after the digestive system uh, is, is in full play. Again, we keep it in a lower tray. We do keep it with its humididome. These are butt chuggers, but they are also okay to water from the top. Now these can get quite large. Um, we're gonna take a minute and walk out onto the sales floor and I'm gonna give you an example of one of the pitcher plants that gets just a little bit larger. So we are out here on the sales floor and while this particular pitcher plant is not for sale, we do have it up a little bit higher as a display to give you an idea of actually how large the pitcher plant can get in the right environment. And you can see here the extreme size of the pitcher compared to the small ones that we have inside. So given the right time, given the right climate, given the right feeding, those smaller ones will grow to be something large like this. You can see this one has been eating for a while, so the main pitcher here uh, is starting to die off on, on this particular Nepenthes. This one is doing okay. There are several more throughout the plant, and it really is a very, very attractive carnivorous plant. Now, like all of the carnivorous, they do take a little bit more maintenance. So it's not one of those that's good for a starter. Many times folks will use uh, a succulent as a starter, very, very hard to kill. These do take a little bit more time, effort, and care. So you just need to take that into consideration if and when you buy a carnivorous. So those are the carnivorous that we currently have in our shop. If you're interested, come on in, stop by, take a look at any of them, ask our sales team. They'd be happy to show them to you and give you some tips on how to display them and also how to care. Thanks for your time today. These are our carnivorous plants at Tide Out Iguana.